Hey, what's going on everyone? No Zoop for you here, and this is more of a somber video, I suppose. Um, found some really devastating news on June 1st that some of you probably know by now, but James D. Hornfisher, a uh, celebrated author of such books like Neptune's Inferno and Last Stand of the Ten Can Sailors, he uh, passed away. And I, I had no idea that he was ill. I, I think many people had no idea that he was ill. But this is a huge loss for Navy history, for the Navy in general, and for all the brave men that fought in World War II and elsewhere. He was a huge advocate of them. He brought their stories to light. And, you know, I, I'm just, it's kind of like a gut punch in a way. I, I mean... In, in an era where actors and film stars usually get the uh, bulk of the attention, Hornfisher was really larger than life in many ways, uh, at least for those who loved history. Uh, I, I got to know him through Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailors. I was at officer training back in 2007, and I came across his book and I read it and I fell in love with it and just the story and how he brought everything to life and the the research he put into it absolutely amazing I I'd never come across a historical novel with the depth that he had put into it the the only one I can think of that was really that in depth would probably be Black Hawk Down um, but this was just something else and it, it really kind of furthered my love for naval history and World War II naval history so uh, learning learning about this news just really I, I, I'm crestfallen because to me he was just such a rare author and one that I really enjoyed reading so um, I'm actually going to read his obituary because I, I can't put into words uh, just the effect that he had on everyone else so um, the the official obituary that was given to him probably explains it the best of who he was and just what a large impact he had on everyone so I'm, I'm gonna read that verbatim I, I think it's important to uh, read it and just understand the impact he had and there's so much I didn't know about him and you know this is a guy that he, he was active on Twitter too for those of you that weren't aware um, I, I had tweeted him several times and he actually responded um, just just a really down-to-earth nice guy uh, I know Wargaming proper they had met with him as well so I mean it's a huge loss so um, I, I'm just going to read it right now, and I, I think it's a good tribute to his life and his work, and, you know, he, he was just a really down-to-earth guy. So, here it is. Uh, one of the greatest naval historians has passed, but that accolade, along with the other talents and success as a lauded writer, literary agent, book editor, renowned speaker, scout leader, Devout fisherman, distinguished eggnog mixologist, and avid Boston sports fan only begins to tell the incredible life story of James D. Hornfisher, the faithful son, husband, father, and friend. Born in Salem, Massachusetts to loving parents David and Elsa Hornfisher, Jim was an energetic child, eager and quick to learn his ABCs. His early boyhood was spent in Amherst, Massachusetts, where he took his first skate on the college ice rink. He loved playing hockey and baseball, began building Ravel military models and hanging them in formation from the ceiling above his bed, and with true foreshadowing, asked to join a military history book club at age 10. One childhood summer, when considering vacation spots, Jim excitedly asked that the family could travel to New York City and tour the offices of his favorite Mad Magazine, to which his parents quickly agreed. Years later, with his ever-evolving appreciation of cultural satire, Good Days at Mad, a memoir by Dick DeBartolo, was the first book Jim represented as a literary agent. Over time, the family moved to Litchfield, Connecticut, where Jim graduated high school, lettered in varsity baseball, and took up trombone. He also became involved in school theater and played on a traveling club ice hockey team. Jim could be found on most weekend nights with a close circle of like-minded, obsessed friends lost in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. 
Jim's close relationship with his uncle Paul instilled a lifelong love of fishing, which Jim passed down to his own family. Like his father and grandfather before him, Jim became an avid Boston sports fan, an affliction he also passed on to his children. When visiting colleges, Colgate was love at first sight. Jim spent the next four years honing his intellectual curiosity with a double major in international relations in German. Jim spent his junior year abroad in Freiburg, Germany. While in college, Jim co-founded and contributed to The Mage, a sci-fi magazine. In his senior year, Jim became executive editor of the college newspaper, The Colgate Maroon. His other campus activities included joining the marching band and the social fraternity Phi Ta were hailing from New England, his fraternity brothers quickly gave him the moniker of Chowder. Jim graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Colgate University in 1987 and headed to New York City where his love of the written word steered his path towards the publishing industry as an editor at McGraw-Hill and later HarperCollins. In those early days of his career in the Big Apple, Jim met and fell in love with a beautiful traveling ER nurse from Texas, Sharon Grace Simmons. The couple relished their time in New York City. They also loved exploring and were able to take advantage of work and travel opportunities in Hawaii, New Zealand, and Alaska. In 1993, after several years of courtship, Jim and Sharon married and made another serendipitous decision to build their life in Austin, Texas, where Jim became one of the first literary agents in the state capitol. He discovered an abundance of prospective clients with stories to be told and soon landed on a genre close to his heart. Jim served as a nonfiction agent with a speciality in developing compelling stories about men and women in service, whether it be historical accounts of military veterans, a diverse range of politicians, patriotism, or current events. Jim quickly grew his client list and became known as a tireless champion and mentor for many budding authors. These were growing years, both professionally and personally, as Jim and Sharon began their family and deepened their roots in Austin. Soon they were blessed with three loving and devoted children, David, James, Grace Ann, and Henry Hutchins. From this foundation, a large fellowship of friends has grown. His entire family and those lucky enough to call him dad or friend knew Jim as reliable, curious, fun-loving, sincere, and so full of enthusiasm that you couldn't help but be swept up in his positivity. Concurrently raising their young children and growing their business, ever the seeker of knowledge and expanding horizons, Jim earned consecutive degrees at the University of Texas at Austin, an MBA from the Macomb School of Business, and then a JD from UT's School of Law. Upon completing law school, Jim and Sharon took their next step by founding Horn Fisher Literary Management, HLM, and focusing on developing historical accounts of important untold stories from both new and established writers. Jim shepherded hundreds of books into fruition, all while creating lasting relationships with his authors, often receiving praise from his many clients. One of the highest compliments Jim ever received was conveyed in a recent letter. You changed my life, it said, and your editing has served as a master class I would not have received any other way. From bestsellers to award-winning books known for their truth, accuracy, and artistry, Jim carefully curated the clients and projects he invested himself in and was proud of each book and the writers that he helped to become published authors. While maintaining his literary agency, Jim was encouraged by a friend and a fellow publishing professional to take a leap of faith and try his hand at writing. He took a World War II story he had known about since childhood and began focusing talent and passion towards his own writing. His first book, The Last Stand of the Ten Can Sailors, is widely considered a classic of naval history. For his first effort, Jim received the Samuel Elliott Morrison Award by the Naval Order of the United States. Jim went on to publish three other indelible World War II histories, all with Bantam books. Ship of Ghosts, Neptune's Inferno, the U.S. Navy at Guadalcanal, and the Fleet at Flood Tide, America, a Total War in Pacific, 1944-1945 receiving the Commodore John Barry Book Award and the John Lehman Distinguished Naval History Award for this epic. Jim took great pride in the fact that each of his books have been placed on the Chief of Naval Operations required reading list. Jim's ability to paint vivid pictures that are both visceral and technical, while also conveying the intimate stories behind momentous events is truly enthralling. Contemporary authors and historians have referred to him as having the mind of a skilled historian with the heart of a lyrical poet. The Dean of World War II Naval History and a Tour de Force Narrative Storyteller. 
Another highlight in Jim's professional life was being introduced to the Brotherhood of the U.S. Navy SEALs and developing relationships while working within that community. A special breed of warrior, the SEALs welcomed Jim, a rare privilege that deeply touched and honored him. Most recently, in his home surrounded by family, dear friends, and a fleet of Navy admirals and officers, Jim proudly beamed and clapped through tears of joy upon receiving the highest civilian accolade. Jim was presented the Navy Distinguished Public Service Award for all his work presenting pivotal naval history, increasing the professionalism and knowledge of Navy personnel, and his extraordinary success at telling the Navy's story. Jim's intellectual pursuits and depth of knowledge might suggest otherwise, but his young spirited soul was always ready for fun, whether at his beloved Frio River, a baseball game, a concert, traveling with family or friends, listening to music by a campfire, outings with the Boy Scout Troop 5, Fisher Dads, and so much more. Usually a man of quiet faith until it was time to sing, Jim's exuberant soul and voice resonated with great pleasure singing in the Terrytown United Methodist Church Choir and famously leading cherished Christmas caroling adventures with special delight when he had cohorts to sing along in German. For Jim, music and hymns were a special bridge to the divine where his hope and comfort resided in his Lord. Throughout the past two years of his illness, Jim continued to be productive, wasting no time on self-pity. Jim completed his most recent projects and will soon have three new books published posthumously. Destroyer Captain, The Last Stand of Ernest Evans, with his son David J. Hornfisher. Who Can Hold the Sea, the U.S. Navy in the Cold War, 1945 to 1960. And The Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailors, a graphic novel adaptation. Jim's greatest joy and priority was always his family. Jim spent intentional time with each of his children, co-writing Destroyer Captain and watching David Blossom as a critical writer, finding his own voice is a special highlight for a father. He connected with Grace Ann through their father-daughter shared playlist. You might find them jamming out to Sia one day, Depeche Mode another, and at other times the music of Dietrich Fischer Dieskau, showing the shared diversity of their musical interests. Jim's special bond with Hutch was through baseball and fishing. They both recalled fondly how an amazing trip to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York turned into a side trip to New York City, where the black market tickets to Red Sox vs. Yankees game might have been finessed, and of course there was fishing on that trip too. There was always fishing. Jim kept a rod and reel in his vehicle just in case a stream or fishing hole appeared. Jim recently told Sharon that he was intensely proud of their three children and that each of them carry within themselves a special and unique piece of him. Jim Hornfisher died as he lived, focusing his passion and determination to enjoy the moments and people in his life, remaining open to hope and possibility while facing reality and his savior straight on, ready for his next step. Jim recently told Sharon, this may sound strange, but through this illness, I've had some of the happiest days of my life all is well with my soul. He is survived by his wife and devoted partner, Sharon, their children, David, Grace Ann, and Hutch, his parents, David and Elsa, sister, Amy Signornio, along with many family members, friends, readers, and colleagues that love and will miss him endlessly. Jim is preceded in death by his uncle, Paul Bozenhard, aunt, Loom Pennington Bush, niece, Samantha Mashad, brother-in-law, Mark Lokard, and grandparents Raymond and Grace Hornfisher and Ernest and Doris Bozenhard. Jim's beautiful journey and powerful example of living every moment to the fullest will be in our hearts forever. Though we know you are gone too soon, dear Jim, fair winds and following seas. And there you have it. Uh, I, I think that pretty much says it better than I could say it. Uh, just a beautiful and moving obituary for really a naval historian that was larger than life and who has led such an interesting life so much about him that i did not know and that i'm sure most of you all did not know as well i, I had no clue he was such a big literary agent and uh he was helping other authors before he became an author himself so um yeah, I, I, uh, I'm going to throw the link to the obituary up in uh, the description of this video. Uh, please check it out. It asks that any donations be sent to the National Museum of the Pacific War. Uh, once again, just really, this was kind of a kick in the gut. I, I wasn't expecting it. I know many people weren't, and I, I think 
probably very few people knew that he was ill. So um, just really sad news. And, you know, I, I just wanted to take the time to pay tribute to him because uh, he was probably my favorite author. And I know anyone that loves the Navy and naval history, he was most likely your favorite author as well. So um, that's all for today. Hope you all are doing great. I will catch you all later. I'm out.